um, people, obviously, our clients and uh, you know, um, colleagues to be uh, in this webinar. So thank you for your time today. So today's session, what we are going to go through is uh, we will be presenting a bit about um, uh, mesh and obviously Canvas point of view and a bit about uh, the integration side of things. So before we start, um, um, so just a little bit of, as Greg has just put in uh, there on the uh, chat. Uh, so if you have any questions during the session, please uh, feel free to um, enter those questions uh, and we will try and answer them as we go along. Also, you can use the chat uh, to put on any comments that you have. So um, thank you again. So welcome to uh, Mesh Canvas Integration Webinar. So I'm going to start um, the webinar now. So uh, thank you all. Um, I know there will be few uh, participants uh, that will be joining in, few attendees. So today we're going to cover Mesh Platform Canvas Integration. Uh, obviously, from Mesh Group side, uh, Pramesh, myself, I will be presenting, and uh, I'm joined by Greg, uh, who is uh, from Canvas. Greg? Hey, everyone. Really glad to be here. Um, I'm a solutions engineer with Instructure, which is the parent company behind Canvas, and been here for about three years, uh, working in the higher ed and the vet sector. So, uh, really happy to show you Canvas today. Fantastic, thank you, Greg. So, uh, so from Mesh Group, I, um, I am the CEO of the company. So just to a lot of you probably already know, but I've not had a chance to meet with all of you, uh, but look forward to uh, engaging with you in coming days. So the agenda for today is our response to the current COVID-19 situation. So obviously uh, this is um, uh, unprecedented times uh, for education industry. Uh, so we'll talk about a little bit about that and we will sort of highlight what is the difference between student management system and learning management system is there and of course we'll give you an overview of MEST uh, student management system platforms that we uh, cater for different sectors um, overview of canvas LMS uh, obviously Greg would be here to provide insight on canvas and of course, we will be doing the work through, through the Mesh Canvas integration process. Uh, and we will have some time later uh, for Q&A. So if there's any questions, please feel free to put that in the uh, panel. So the current um, situations of COVID as we all are affected. So it has resulted in uh, government closing education institution, as you know, to spread, uh, to contain the spread of the virus. So currently worldwide, uh, it's estimated uh, by UNESCO that 91% of the world's student populations are affected. So one of the things that is obviously uh, been um, a focus for many education providers uh, in Australia that we see uh, with a lot of our uh, clients, uh, some of you there attending today, you know, moving towards an online delivery or online learning practice to support the students. Uh, we've also seen uh, on the regulatory agencies, uh, such as uh, TEXA and ASPA has uh, come uh, with some additional information. So there are a couple of links for you uh, to have a look. You might already have received that information, but something to have a look and uh, uh, see if that's something that would help you um, in uh, moving forward to the online uh, learning uh, practices. So the teaching uh, and learning from home now become a new normal. That's the word, uh, obviously, for students and educators. So from our point of view, message group, um, we have a number of built-in platform functionalities that supports our client in order to manage that um, aspects of online learning. Plus, we also have integration capabilities. Uh, that's what we do with a learning management system and other tools, such as Moodle Canvas and so on that can help educators and students to stay connected in these unprecedented times. So difference between um, SMS uh, and LMS. So there's a bit of confusion that we see every now and then, you know, um, the components, they sort of overlap. However, just to give you a clarity, a student management system allows you to keep record of students from end-to-end uh, -end process. So 
day-to-day uh, -day operations of, of a training entity. Uh, you know, if the students put an inquiry application, uh, taking them through an or, you know, online application or enrollment management to the course, uh, obviously that sort of things is managed by student management. And of course, timetabling, scheduling, you know, fees management, um, then um, enrolling into the timetable classes are other elements that the student management system does. Uh, of course, the attendance and assessments are critical, especially for CRICOS compliance purposes, um, and monitoring of student progress is essential. So a student management system would be able to give you those tools in order to manage, uh, you know, take care of record and monitor those attendance and assessments. And later down the track, notifications, communications, so engaging, sending emails, sending SMS to the mobile phones, using mobile app, that sort of engagement between uh, facilitators, providers, students, that that's something that can be done through student management. And of course, issuing of academic documents, certificates and transcripts. From a learning management system, it's more towards an online classroom or an engaging on an online delivery. So, it enables lecturers and teachers to put up notes, uh, learning materials, announcement, information uh, you know, that can be content driven, providing uh, access to the students, and of course, uh, recording the assessments and doing the grades. So of course, it improves uh, compliance by full transparency because that's the activities that the students have undertaken. Uh, with a good learning management system, you'll be able to do that. Uh, reduce the cost of training staff, uh, having an online uh, you know, LMS uh, functionality, it enables you to better prepare and engage with the students um, outside of face-to-face -face delivery and centralizing learning content to one location. So obviously that's another important aspect. So the uh, different types of learning and assessment strategy, depending upon how you manage, that's something you would be able to put that in the learning management system tracking uh, the performance uh, and of course uh, quickly expanding uh, teaching resources if you want to add more elements. So great will uh, give you a bit more clarity when it talks about Canvas um, a bit later. So from a MIST platform point of view, so we've uh, been operating um, over 14 years on different sectors. So we provide our solutions to higher education sectors, registered training organization, Alicos colleges and providers, universities, so that cater for international and domestic students. So that's where we, uh, you know, um, we work with majority of CRICOS um, uh, providers, um, but do we, we definitely work with other sectors as well. So uh, every sector is from higher education. So there are, there's a link that you can uh, follow through to see uh, some of our clients that we support uh, through their student management uh, aspects. And obviously our uh, solution integrates uh, and manages students from an inquiry till the uh, graduation side of things. And there are some inbuilt uh, learning tools as well. So in a nutshell, our platform helps uh, education providers with every essential elements from inquiries to completion and everything in between. So some of, you know, we are um, obviously privileged to work with some of you uh, to provide our solutions and work you in, in great partnership. So that's, uh, that's a highlight of a uh, different component within our platform. So uh, as you can see, some, of, some are related with admissions, course management, student management, timetable, obviously CRM side of things, student self-servicing, um, you know, multi-campus. So there's a number of elements that bring together. Of course, depending upon your business needs, this is something that uh, we would be able to obviously provide um, various elements to support your business requirement. So a bit about uh, from our end. So of course, I would now pass it on to Greg uh, to talk about uh, you know, this side of things, Canvas related information. Greg? Thanks, Pramesh. Um, so just wanted to give you a quick highlight about what Canvas learning management system is. So uh, in front of you there, you can see that Canvas is available as a desktop app as well as an app on an Android or iOS device. But really, when we're developing uh, Canvas, we really want to make that easy for everyone. So a really nice way of demonstrating that is looking at integrations with student management systems, the transfer of your users into Canvas, and then the transfer of results back out. 
but when we talk about easiness, that's uh, ease of use for the student actually navigating the application and hopefully actually achieving faster completion rates than uh, some other systems out there. But also uh, future proofing the system. So Canvas works with clients from a few hundred all the way up to over a million students. We can scale to your growth, uh, but we can also scale to whatever applications you're using external to Canvas. So if you want to bring in an external application, that's really, really easy within Canvas as well. So Pramesh, can you go to the next slide for me? So as I said, in the center here, we have the learning management system, and we also provide a video platform within Canvas as well. But if you want to bring in something like uh, plagiarism detection through services like Turnitin, we integrate really seamlessly with those tools. If you want to bring in publisher content because you're already subscribing to certain publishers, Again, that's really easy. So simple to use from both an administrative and a student perspective. The openness that we talk about is really the ability to bring in those external tools, or if you want to bring in external content, that's really simple to do as well. Finally, I think in this climate, it's really important to talk about reliability. So uh, almost overnight, learning management systems became the sort of core tool for a lot of RTOs, a lot of K-12 providers. And having a service that is reliable, it's not gonna fall over, and it's something that your users can really simply access, we think is really critical uh, for business continuity. On to the next slide, thanks Pramesh. So as I mentioned, we work with a wide range of customers. I uh, just chose to put Red Hill Education here as a bit of a case study. So Red Hill chose uh, to partner with Canvas um, due to things like the scalability and the fact that we are a really innovative innovative solution that regularly updates. So Canvas is actually a service where you subscribe to the platform. We update that automatically for you. We kind of take a lot of the hosting hassle away from you. And we also look after the support. So we're an all-in-one solution for you in that regard. And next slide, thanks Pramesh. Just thought it was worth also highlighting a few different uh, customers that we work with. So we're not sort of um, specific to an RTO sector. We're not specific to a particular delivery mechanism. So we can definitely point you with, uh, to partners who can help develop content for whatever uh, qualifications you have on scope. So hopefully that's showing you that Canvas is uh, a really flexible platform. Pramesh, back to you, I think. Thank you. So now the next uh, part of is where uh, you know, we would like to talk about integration overview. So most of us, uh, we have worked uh, uh, with Canvas, uh, utilizing the Canvas API uh, to enable a two-way integration. So obviously our focus is to eliminate the double data handling. And uh, these are some of the activities that we have um, taken in order to make it seamless, uh, the integration seamless as possible. So obviously there is a, a Canvas user account. So from uh, that's something can be created uh, from Mesh platform. So that is something I would be able to demonstrate that. And the semesters mapping with the term in Canvas. So there is some differences in terminology between two platforms, obviously being a student management, learning management, two different platforms, but we, are, we have been able to map them uh, between two platforms to make it uh, you know, easier to manage the delivery side of things. And the subjects and assessment within Mesh platform to obviously link with uh, Canvas, uh, courses and assignment. And as the students are being enrolled in Mesh platform, then that would automatically be enrolled uh, on those relevant courses in Canvas. So that's another uh, you know, powerful element of integration. Uh, finally, uh, we have um, the assessment integration. So some of uh, the providers uh, would uh, likely be interested on managing the assessment, recording them, that in Canvas and bringing it back to MESS. So that is something uh, that you would be able to uh, achieve as well with this integration. So it has two components. Uh, one is real time based on event on MESH platform. So you can create a user account and that automatically creates um, you know, the user in Canvas. And there is an automated integration that runs, uh, you know, uh, regularly, uh, that obviously interchange data between two platforms. So uh, what uh, we're going to talk about is the uh, overview demo. So what I'm going to do here is bring up um, um, the platform. So what uh, we have chosen for this demonstration 
a mesh RTO manager platform. So that is uh, focused on uh, uh, vocational education and training and pri course component. And we've got obviously um, the uh, Canvas platform that you're looking at um, in, in the screen. So um, a login within the system, so I will uh, provide you um, where these integrations sort of happens. So some of you are already aware of uh, our platforms. You've been using the platforms for a number of years. So you would see uh, within the course management, there are a number of uh, functionalities uh, that are enabled based on Canvas integration. So one of the elements is subjects. So you can see there um, the list of uh, units or subjects that you may have in a place that you have set up within the platform. That is something that you would be able to push back, push to Canvas as a blueprint. So if I go to Canvas and go to admin section, uh, there is an area where we select default term and show blueprint courses. Now, uh, what I will do is, so currently, um, I'm going to push this um, manage people performance um, as a blueprint course. Uh, and obviously what the platform does, it, it successfully created blueprint course. It gives that function, that, you know, information, and then it brings that manage people performance uh, information within uh, Canvas. So if we go into this, so this is a blueprint course. Great. Do you want to talk about a little bit about blueprint courses uh, and given all the yeah. So we'll talk more about Blueprint uh, once I start to share my screen. But in essence, Blueprint is a way that you can template your material that will be delivered over and over again in Canvas for any cohorts or uh, different locations where you want to deliver this content. The benefit of using Blueprint is that you have uh, content in one location only. So this is like a master template where you can make any changes and Blueprint will allow you to synchronize those changes to any courses that are using this template. Also, RTOs <clears throat> really like that we can actually lock content down. So if you need to standardize the delivery of a particular unit, or potentially you have uh, sessional staff delivering the training, you can lock the entire unit down so that no changes can be made to that content. Thank you, Greg. So now I will go back to the platform. So obviously, once you have um, uh, the subjects print sent as a blueprint, so one of the elements that you are able to do is you can set up an assessment task. So this is something that we, uh, you know, um, that would later be used for syncing with the assignment in Canvas. So that is, uh, so for example, I'm just going to have a, a assessment set up to assessment for this purpose uh, and assessment two under this, so which could be an exam, so it could be an online exam. Um, and of course, we are setting these to assessment up within the system. The next element from an integration point of view is related with your semester. So what happens is in your platform, you could create your semesters or terms depending upon how you provide your delivery. And that information can be pushed automatically using an automated engine. So in this scenario, um, what happens is as these um, as these um, terms are being pushed, they will then appear on the terms within the platform, and then they will appear uh, later down the track uh, as the timetables are created. So that is the term uh, is important element within the canvas. The next step, uh, what I'm going to demonstrate is about your student management and how to create student users. So we've got a, a Grace Citizen over here as a user, so which has been um, you know, created as a reserve ID. So I'm just going to set up and confirm this student um, into, um, you know, from an application stage to a student stage. So once you have uh, under the student stage, you one of the elements that you can you need to do within Mesh is to be able to create the user account. So um, So I'm just going to create the user account. After you have created the user account within Mesh, what that does is it enables this to allow to push the Canvas uh, user account creation. So either you can do it by clicking it here, or you can go to student profile and where you would be able to use this functionality to push to create the Canvas account. So what that does is as soon as the Canvas account is created, they will then appear 
under this section and where you would be able to see grace citizens being pushed into Canvas. So the uh, students are then synced, uh, their informations are available in Canvas. Obviously the next step is for us to uh, manage uh, process um, in order to, order to manage uh, the students enrollment side of things. So obviously uh, in order for the next step is manage orientation. So where we would like to ensure that the uh, all the current enrolled students are now uh, converted as a current. So this orientation process that happened, that is available within Mesh platform enables to convert and enroll students into current students so they can be put into timetable. So once we have that, the next step is uh, within the platform is to be able to create a timetable. So obviously uh, from a timetable point of view, uh, you have a scheduling uh, feature within the platform uh, where you are able to select the duration and be able to select a particular subject and you could provide the information such as the batch and it could be in, you know, obviously virtual class, however you would want to set that up and then or general class and you can have it uh, available as your timings depending upon what you are of you know what you are offering. So once you have created this timetable, what the platform does is, is enables that information to be pushed. So for the purpose of integration, we of course can do integrations, uh, you know, hourly, the, sh the scheduling of integration that I talked about. So currently we've done every two minutes so that it pushes the data from Mesh platform uh, to, uh, to Canvas um, every two minutes. So interchange of data. So one of the things that we would like to finish it up before I pass on to Gray is that every assessment that we have set up has to be linked with those uh, classes so that they will then be ready to be pushed in the next schedule update. So these informations then when we go to uh, the courses level and then when we go to the term one, so obviously as the scheduling goes through, uh, it will uh, bring that um, course information over here um, and then uh, we will then be able to push students enrollment um, and then uh, also the assignment side of things. So I will uh, pass on to Greg uh, for now and then I'll come back and do the students enrollment and of course the assessment side of things. Thanks Pramesh. Um, so I realized uh, earlier I was going to be launching a poll, so I might do that now, but this is just going to help give an indication as to your existing knowledge of an LMS system and what technologies you're currently using. So if you can see that on your screen, um, that'd be great if you could just participate. And I'm just going to share my screen now and give you a brief overview of um, how Canvas works very briefly from a student and a teacher perspective. So really just wanted to highlight some of the tools that are being used uh, within Canvas due to the rapid transition to online. So I can see those poll results coming through. Thank you very much for those who are answering. Um, but what I wanted to highlight here is that we've branded Canvas to Mesh Groups Branding, co-branded it with a Canvas logo on the right hand side of the screen. But Canvas is also really flexible in that we can have multiple uh, brands running within the one Canvas instance. So this particular course on the dashboard here, I can click here and it will now load a Westpac branding. So if you do have multiple, um, if you're co-delivering a course with industry, we can actually accommodate that branding directly within Canvas. But what we're seeing on that dashboard screen, so for a teacher, uh, the dashboard screen is really useful to find out all unassessed assignments. On the right hand side of a screen, a to-do list will aggregate together all of the ungraded assignments we can then grade that either online or we can actually download those assessments, grade them offline and then upload them back into Canvas. But often what's been really uh, useful for institutions is our inbuilt conferencing tool. So not too dissimilar to Zoom, within a Canvas course or a unit of competency, we can actually start a virtual classroom. And that allows uh, for document sharing, for screen sharing, uh, for chat by all of your students who are participating, and then we can also share audio and video. We can run things like polls. Uh, we can share our screen. We can start a presentation. 
and your users can have a chat in the background. They can share notes. These sessions can also be recorded. So often uh, in this current climate, the conferencing tool is a really simple way for organizations to replicate that classroom-based interaction. So we'll come back to some other tools that are available in Canvas, but just to show you another example of a blueprint tool. So Pramesh showed earlier how we could transfer from RTO Manager a blueprint course into Canvas. We've then built out this particular course with a little bit of content. So we've got a visual homepage here. A user can click into the get started section, into their assignments or into their reading. So a really simple navigation. And we can see on the right hand side of the screen here, this is going to show us where this particular blueprint is utilized. And I've actually made 139 changes to this course since that was last synchronized. So we can just click sync. Those 139 changes will be pushed across to any associated courses. And then the other thing that we mentioned was that from an RTO's perspective, we can actually choose what elements will be locked down, what elements that the people delivering this content won't be able to amend. So within this unit, we have uh, files, we've got pages of information, we have assessments. We can come and lock down, for instance, all of the assessment information, or we can actually just lock down everything within this course. So any people delivering won't be able to change how that is structured. If we look at Canvas from a student perspective, uh, just a few things to highlight. So we'll come into this particular course, Natalie is enrolled in. So Natalie would automatically see all of the units or clusters that she's enrolled in based on the data that's in RTO Manager. Again, we've got a different homepage in this particular course and Natalie can see all of the upcoming assessments and due dates events that exist within this course. So really easy for Natalie to gauge where she's up to in this course and how far through she's progressed as well. But clicking into the very first piece of content we have here, this is just some uh, text, some files and some videos that we've uploaded into this resource. We work with tools like Immersive Reader, which actually allows the student to have all of this content read out to them in a really nat natural voice. But we can also translate that content into a different language or we could do things like, in this case, I'm highlighting nouns and verbs within this content. So this is one example of the accessibility within Canvas. We also support things like screen readers or a high contrast mode for vision impaired students. But if we scroll down, this document that we've uploaded into Canvas, the student can actually preview directly within their browser or they can download that PDF file to their computer. The video that we've uploaded, we've actually got the opportunity for students to collaborate together within the video. These blue dots are comments that have been left on the video. But from a teacher's perspective, this actually allows us to uh, determine who's watched that video file and how far through they went as well. So with teacher permissions, we get an additional option which allows us to view how many students click play and how far through that video they went as well. So this is one way that we can uh, monitor students. We also have a lot of analytics behind the scenes. You can monitor how long the student spent in the platform, how they've done in all of their assessments, and we can bulk communicate, for example, all the students who haven't yet submitted an assignment. This next resource that I've navigated to is uh, another video resource, but this time we've actually embedded quizzes into this video. So rather than having to monitor whether students have watched that video, we can just monitor the grade that the student receives. We can look at the assessment feedback uh, for either the class as a whole, or we can drill down to an individual student and see how they performed in this particular quiz. So video quizzing is entirely optional. Uh, you can do a complete quiz with just multiple choice questions. You can have uh, drag and drop questions, a lot of different assessment types available within Canvas. This is just one example that I thought it was worth highlighting as a lot of institutions are already using content in things like YouTube or their own existing video content. Just before I hand back to Pramesh, one of the things I thought it was worth highlighting is how the user can access Canvas from a mobile device. So I've moved across to my iPad on, on uh, my computer here, and you can see that the user, this student, Natalie, can see everything we've looked at so far. So we can jump back into that same course that we looked at earlier and we can come into our modular view. We can see how many modules uh, exist within this course and how far through we've got as well. So what you'll notice here is that module one is unlocked. 
module two is locked. So before I meet all of the criteria in module one, I can't actually progress further in this course. So we can stagger users through content as well. One thing our RTOs use quite a lot within Canvas is the ability to video assess students. So with video uh, assessment, sometimes we also will attach an observational checklist, but it's really simple for your students to actually record video directly from the Canvas app. So I'm connecting through to my camera here. We can just record a really quick video. And when that's done, we can upload that back into Canvas and your assessors will be notified that a submission has been made to this task. This also allows for students to submit audio, video, files, text, whatever you would like. It's really up to you when you're designing this task as to what you're requiring your students submit. From a compliance perspective, we never delete any submissions. So you will always have retained any submissions that students made. Up at the top here, you can see that my teacher app is now notifying me that Natalie has resubmitted to this task. So I can come back in and assess that at any point. And assessment can take place on mobile, can play, take place on the desktop as well. But really it's allowing us to view the student submission on the left-hand side of the screen. And then we're grading against a rubric or we're just providing a satisfactory, not yet satisfactory, competent, not yet competent grade. But any submission that Natalie has previously made to this task, we can also come back and view. And if it's a document or an image, we can annotate all over that and provide Natalie with some really rich feedback. So Pramesh, I think I'll leave it there for now, unless there's any questions I haven't answered. I think there are a couple of questions that is coming Q&A, uh, so. Cool. Um, so yeah, Pramesh, I don't know if that's a question you want to answer about the institutional email versus a okay. user's personal email. Okay, so I think uh, you're referring to the chat. Okay, so let me go through first. Uh, I've got two questions. There is account creating and later on account management. So that's from Megaran. Uh, manage centrally or Canvas can pull details such as password from a central repository or they will be kept separately in Archer Manager and Canvas. So currently uh, for that particular question, uh, we do have a separate user management, uh, but we are looking into the single sign-on process in order to manage uh, that um, one user sharing uh, through some sort of um, shared user management. So that is something that we are looking on to adding that to the integration uh, at this stage. But uh, currently they are separately managed, the user account are separately managed. Um, the, another question from Miles is how will this work with weekly rolling intakes? So I uh, imagine um, let me share um, uh, my screen. Uh, so I'm going to share screen and go back to um, uh, platform. So uh, here, for example, when we are talking about rolling intake, uh, if you are managing uh, and creating timetable that goes through every week, or you could have a longer durations of uh, you know, timetable that is running, but students are coming in every week through their intakes. So we have a course intake functionality that would be every week intake. And then the students, depending upon the week and the timetable they are allocated, that will automatically then push uh, them to Canvas accordingly. I'll quickly have a look at uh, uh, some chats as well. So there are a couple of questions on the chat. Um, so from Craig, uh, from a student's perspective, student experience, uh, I think uh, Greg, uh, you did mention about uh, uh, for Canvas, um, you know, is there anything you would want to add on, on top of that? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's just worth looking at the poll results for people who are currently using things like a virtual classroom more than likely that we will integrate with that technology as well. So if you want to keep using your existing tool, whether it's Microsoft Teams or Zoom, uh, that will integrate directly into Canvas as well. So you can embed those uh, virtual classroom calendar events within the platform. So generally we see Canvas as being a bit of the student hub for once they're actually enrolled in their course. Uh, this will be where they spend the majority of their time accessing content, uh, completing assessment, and then hooking into those third party tools like Zoom for instance. Okay. 
So there are a couple of questions. I'm just uh, wanting to probably complete the integration part and then we will tackle those questions uh, that is there. So just to while we were talking uh, and, and while Greg was uh, you know, going through, so you can see that managed people performance uh, has come through in Canvas. So one of the things that we generally advise uh, provide, especially for the um, ensuring the grading is managed to ensure that the course grading scheme under settings uh, are appropriately set up. So if it's an RTO, you may just have competent, not yet competent, and that is something that would be utilized and you may have a marks that you will enter according to that. So that's a grading scheme is important. Obviously, if you're a higher education provider, you, would, you may have a different marks grading, which high distinction, distinction, and so on. So coming back to Mesh RTO Manager, now we've got the timetable, we've pushed uh, the courses. So the next step is we're going to enroll a student. So we have Grace Citizen, and we're going to enroll uh, Grace into Managed People Performance uh, subject. Um, and then obviously we created that timetable. So that, uh, there's a number of ways students can be enrolled uh, within MESH through a self-service enrollment process or through by, uh, you know, a student services staff or through a bulk enrollment or individually. So once the students are enrolled uh, into this particular uh, cohort group, so which is group A1 that we created timetable, so this uh, should allow them um, after obviously the next uh, iteration, uh, to be able to uh, students' details to be uh, pushed in Canvas so that they will then be able to be marked. While that is happening, you would also notice that under the assignments point of view, previously we had assessment one and assessment two, which is obviously we created for um, the students uh, for that particular subject. Uh, and then that is something that we are going to see that coming from Canvas. So, so now we can see uh, the integration has run and then Grace Citizen has, um, you know, obviously the data is synced and the user is there. So the next step is for us to be able to record the marks. So as we had the grading scheme selected as competent, not yet competent, and which is uh, one of the uh, element in Canvas is everything carries some sort of marks, but then that is linked back to the grading. So you could have 75 or it could be 100, uh, depending upon how you would want, that element then uh, you know, obviously uh, provides what is the outcome of each um, assessment. And that is something that we are uh, looking to bring uh, you know, within uh, MESH, so obviously in next iteration. So as you can see, uh, this term one, managed people performance, and as the integration runs, uh, it will be able to select, uh, you know, uh, especially from RTO, uh, satisfactory or not yet satisfactory, and then the assessments can be brought over within MESH, uh, and then you can finalize the results at the end of the term, depending upon your cycle of how you manage. Um, while that is happening, um, there's uh, another question uh, from Martin, our admissions requires a lot of flexibility and isn't always linear or straightforward. Is it required that the admission process follow the strict order for integration to work? Um, it depends, uh, Martin, uh, in relation to how you would like to manage it. Um, of course, uh, when you say uh, flexibility within a particular semester, if you have students uh, starting at different uh, periods, you can control that through the dates. Uh, of their students' enrollment, and that would mean the integration will send according to those dates, um, you know, uh, management. From a content point of view, um, I think from Canvas point of view, as we link with the content, and as you have published the content, is there any specific item break you would want to clarify on this point? No, I don't think so. So for rolling enrollments or um, students sort of, whatever data appears in MESH is going to be pushed across to Canvas. And definitely we have customers using rolling enrollments and um, uh, different forms of teaching, whether it's sort of different uh, lengths of time per unit or what have you, we've, we've seen that before. Okay, great. 
So now just coming back to the uh, platform. So now I've just clicked on view uh, with students. So the, uh, you know, obviously the satisfactory has come in through and obviously it's, it's completely up to you how you would want to manage. You can have locked and approved uh, that sort of process. And then once you have finalized, then you can transfer the results. So as all the assessments was competent, you can finalize that competent and you can process that grade. So currently it's enrolled. So once that is finalized, you can have a unique competency day and you can transfer the results, which obviously finalizes the results. So from end to end process, when the students uh, data is pushed uh, till the point uh, students enrollments are you know, in Canvas, students undertakes assessments, quizzes or those activities within Canvas as the marks gets recorded, they will then get back to Mesh uh, platform, in this case, Mesh Archive Manager to finalize the results uh, through a moderation process. So that is a, a, a complete picture of how um, the integrations obviously uh, has been built. Um, obviously we've got, um, so, so that's, that's to give you an insight. Um, now, uh, question and answer. I think there are a couple of um, questions that was on the chat, if I put that uh, through here. So Martin has asked, uh, we prefer college email to be pushed rather than personal email. Is this possible? It is possible to uh, configure the integration to push college email, uh, obviously, uh, as, uh, as to create users in Canvas. So that's fine. Uh, Sant has uh, asked, we are in process of registering as an RTO, hope to get registered by September. We're using Catapult LMS. Um, Martin has asked very good questions. Uh, okay, so that's, that's the answer to that. Uh, from Craig, or this, um, is this or will it be TCSI compliant? Uh, yes, our missed higher education platform is, um, is uh, TCSI compliant, especially we are on final stages of um, doing the integration and testing with a number of our clients on the higher education space. Uh, obviously, uh, the P-Health part is already available uh, and ready for production. Uh, the PIR component is in progress. Uh, Greg, you put something in there you would want to... Yeah, just uh, I didn't mention earlier, but a user can also add additional communication methods. So definitely you can provision with the college email. A student can then also add additional email addresses or if they configure our mobile apps, they can then receive push notifications. So we allow the user to control uh, how they can be communicated with as well. Also from that perspective, we also log every communication that's uh, sent out of the platform. And if a student was to reply to your email that you sent from Canvas, that actually comes back into Canvas before you then receive that. So every communication can be logged and we can then visualize to you how often a student is communicating when you're replying or vice versa. There is a question uh, from Miles. Does, it, does each course need an SIS ID? If so, do you have a suggestion on format? I'm not sure if uh, the SIS point of view, I think we use the integrations element uh, that is available within Canvas in order to map back to the course. So uh, obviously that's um, some element uh, that uh, is already taken care of within the integration. Uh, but if you are looking for variations of the um, delivery side of things on each uh, unit uh, or a course in Canvas, you would have to create uh, uh, multiple subjects and push it through. Um, uh, great from a Canvas point of view, uh, once there's a blueprint, each associated course can have their own SIS ID. Is that correct? That's right. So uh, the SIS IDs need to be unique. Um, and we also, as Pramesh mentioned earlier, the user themselves has that unique ID that's pushed across to Canvas as well. So that's always how we identify a course user. Um, they can be in any format but we generally suggest something that's going to make sense to you if you do want to use that to search to help you target a particular course. Um, so no necessarily, there's no requirements from our end as to the format, but it's probably just worth structuring that in a, in a logical way for your organization. Uh, there is a question from Craig. Uh, not sure if you saw my earlier questions. Is my qual equals functionality already built in within the application? Um, there, there are, uh, 
there are uh, some of the element in relation to uh, producing your qualification, but we don't have an uh, integrations with uh, uh, my equals, uh, if that's the questions I've understood as yet. Um, uh, there are some, um, um, something on the roadmap, but uh, that is not something that is available out of the box at the moment. Uh, Martin has another question. We have to delete the canvas blueprint uh, from mesh. What? But the push icon in mesh doesn't allow me to repush. So there is, uh, from an integration point of view, there are every um, element within the platform is unique. Uh, that is between canvas and uh, mesh. Uh, once the uh, element is removed uh, within canvas, I think uh, uh, the integration um, has to um, rework and having allowing to repush is, is something that could create complexity uh, but we are happy to look into that based on your scenario Martin and talk to our te technical team. Uh, okay Greg uh, you know do you want to answer the questions put by Sant? Sure so uh, from a kind of administrative perspective you can have people that have contextual permissions to view multiple courses so whether that's someone that can view all courses within a particular qualification or like a, a top level administrator that can view all courses, uh, we can then filter down and see how often that communication is occurring. But also we have a data service which will allow you to analyze all of the communications that have occurred within the platform for quality. And definitely we work with some third party tools as well, which can do a more sophisticated tracking on things like um, trainers with outstanding assessments and how long it's taken on average for a particular trainer to grade submissions and some more powerful statistics about trainer performance. Uh, so we can recommend partners as well that can help you visualize that data. Thank you, Greg. So I think we've sort of covered all the questions. Yeah, happy for any questions in the chat or the Q&A panel. Um, okay, it doesn't seem to be any further questions at this stage. So um, obviously, uh, you know, uh, here is, if you would like to get in touch, uh, so the contact um, in there from uh, Mesh uh, Jordan Kirillov, uh, who obviously looks after client relationship, and William Campbell uh, from Canvas. So uh, we will, of course, uh, provide you uh, the a copy of the slides and also link um, to the recording. Uh, and uh, you know, obviously, if you've got any questions, you can get in touch with us. Uh, Greg, anything you would like to add? No, just thank you for your time. And um, yeah, really glad that we can work with people like Mesh Group. Uh, to show you this sort of integration and hopefully we've uh, shown the value of, of why a live integration is important. Okay, thank you so much everyone. It has been a real uh, pleasure to have you here and we do appreciate your time. I know it is an unprecedented time for all of us in the education industry, but obviously uh, we are here to support. Uh, Mesh Group is here to support uh, and obviously we've got Canvas offerings. And, and many, many other elements as well. So please get in touch and we will be more than happy to assist you to support your uh, business at this time. Uh, okay, so no problem. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Appreciate your Thanks. time. Thank you.